So many musicians literally sacrifice their lives for the sake of making great music and living eternally through their legacies. This film is a journey of celebration, a pilgrimage of sorts, to pay homage to some of the great minds of jazz music, who've changed the face of music and its approach forever. Jazz is freedom, expression, love, pain, greatness, and so much more to the countless hearts and minds that have been touched by its vibrations. Come join us on the journey to the last stop on the Ford train. Yo, peace. This is John Robinson. We headed up to the last stop on the Ford train, Woodlawn, Woodlawn Cemetery. So many jazz greats are there, you know? Lionel Hampton is there, the master of vibes. Miles Davis is there, you know? Miles ahead of all those other cats. Coleman Hawkins, the hawk, the bean, he's there. You know, Max Roach, M. Boom, he's there. You know, Milk Jackson Bags is there. You know, and others. We're gonna be speaking on these cats' greatness. Jackie McLean, J. Mac Attack. And really, this is a story of the rest in place of so many jazz cats who influenced people like myself and so many others around the world who do music today celebrating the music that came before us and we want to take our time to pay homage and really share some of the stories and some of the greatness of a lot of these cats some of the amazing things that were done you know so I headed uptown to the BX to meet the good brother Thomas Simmons. And on my way up, it's funny, I was thinking, I wonder if the brother Thomas even knows how big of a role he played in me becoming a jazz lover. I doubt it. But yeah, man, this guy's really brilliant. He's like a jazz connoisseur, historian within his yes. own rights. We live and direct. We're in the BX right now. What's up? You know what I'm saying? Hip hop is here. Jazz is definitely here. And we headed, where we headed, brother? We headed to Woodlawn Cemetery, the last stop on the Fort train. Exactly. Yeah. And the mission is greatness. You know, Woodlawn Cemetery, last stop on the Fort train. The final resting place for so many of our greats in jazz music specifically. And that's what we're celebrating today. We're going up there to really put people on. Yeah. In a sense of how much greatness lies to rest there. And not only that, some of the stories, some of the history of all of these greats, who they were, who they are, what they did, and what they're still doing. It was with great pleasure to be embarking upon this journey with the good brothers Thomas Simmons and T.C. III. I've known Thomas for over a decade, as we have worked together on various releases of mine in the past. I just met T.C. the day before, but let me tell you, the brother's vibe was so cool, I felt like I'd known him just as long. T.C. is the son of jazz musicians Trudy Pitts and Bill Carney, aka Mr. C from Philadelphia, as well as being a jazz vocalist himself. TC shared so many classic stories, and so did Thomas. I really did feel amazing to be taking this trip uptown to the last stop on the Ford train to visit some of the masters. So sit back, relax, and take this ride with us. We're almost there. We're standing here at the rest in, rest in place, the late great Jackie McLean, alto sax legend, jazz messenger. Jazz messenger. In 1957, he had joined Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers. Okay. Blakey took him along. And that time, that band consisted of Bill Hardman, Jackie McLean, Sam Dockery out of Camden, New Jersey, and Spanky the Breast out of Philadelphia in Art Blakey. And you know, he did some uh, recordings for like uh, 
label, record labels like uh, Pacific Jazz okay. with Blakey, uh, Cadet on an album called Tough. You know, uh, he had a few nice pieces. And as a side man, he delivered excellent writing techniques for Blakey. And he did extensive recording for Prestige Record Label. So let's talk about like his early beginnings. Like, where did he grow up? He grew up in the Sugar Hill section of Harlem. True. I and mean, he was a part of the thing called the Neighborhood Band. The Neighborhood Band consisted of Cat Art Taylor. Okay. Uh, both piano players at the time was Walter Bishop Jr. and Kenny Drew. And the saxophone player at that time, along with Jackie, was Sonny Rollins. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And in, in, in uh, 1960, he did an off-Broadway play for his acting career. I didn't know that. Buddy. Yeah, it's called The Connection. Hmm. With right, Pierre, they, just, they recently did that over. Yeah. With his the, son, Renee. Okay. okay. With, with his... Um, he did connection, a... Huh? Yeah, The Connection with a piano player by the name of Freddie Red. Okay. And it was the Freddie Red Quartet featuring Jackie McLean. And this uh, play was about... Uh, drug users mm. at the time and beatniks at the time. Wow. You know, had tunes on there like OD. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm wow. Wow. Overdose talk about the drug scene. You know what I'm saying? True. And that ran uh, like two or three years in New York, you know. And he's known for that. It's a great record on Blue Note. And Blue Note did uh, release that record. Music for the Connection. So what would you consider, like, you know, for the people viewing this who may not know J Mac attacks greatness right offhand? What would you consider like if I said, you know, some top five releases to go check out to really learn about the greatness of Jackie McClendon? Well, he did one. He did one as a leader for Blue Note, and the one he did as a leader for Blue Note, his first one was New Soil, Sorry. and he had a ta he had a uh, working relationship at the time, which he had a working relationship with Trump and the Donald Byrd. Okay. Who was with Jackie in the George Wallington Quintet? You know, so, so they did that record. I tell you that George record. What well, year was the George Wallington Quintet? 1955. Okay. See, when after the after after Charlie Parker had died, hard bop a hard bop came into play. True. So you birthed bands like you birthed brands like the Jazz Messengers, True. the Oscar Pettiford combo with uh, Nat Adderley and Cannonball Adderley. You know. You know, Miles and Davis. This is, okay, Ripper. so this is mid '50s that this whole. Yeah, because after, after really, after to me when, after Bird died, Bebop kind of died. Because Bebop is a hard uh, music to play. And this is like. And, and when Hard Bop came along, it was a little more easy to play. Mm -hmm. It was a little more easy to play when Hard Bop came along. So you, the, the, the musicians, you know, uh, Jackie, they have the the jam sessions and they get, you know. Do anything. Got you. And he's also educated as well. So I, I remember, I remember the University um, of Hartford watching Professor. an interview with uh, what's the drummer Billy Higgins. Yeah, Billy Higgins did a, a extensive work with uh, Jackie McLean on Blue Note. Yeah. He on probably like seventy percent of them records yeah, on Blue yeah. Note with. If, but with, Billy uh, Higgins in this interview, he expressed how. Jackie McLean, in a lot of ways, gave him knowledge of himself. Yeah, because right. Jackie was always, like he you know, raised he had, him up to yeah, consciousness and really exactly. knowing. Exactly, and Jackie had became Muslim. True. You know, when he had did those records, see, in the seventies, he had recorded for a label. Go get a lot of those recorders as well. A label called Steeplechase. Steeplechase. Mm. Yeah, that was the label in the seventies. Because after Blue Note started going commercial. A lot of the musicians still were playing straight ahead, so the straight ahead thing about making money, so they were recording overseas. Mm -hmm. Him, uh, Jackie McLean, Dexter Gordon, Kenny Drew, uh, R. Taylor, all them guys, Johnny Griffin, they went overseas. Yeah. You know? yeah. And Jackie was a way in the in the wave of that, you know, transfer. But a beautiful cat, man, you know what I'm saying? Beautiful cat, you know, he'll talk to you. I don't care what you was doing. He'll make time to talk to you. Mm. And he has a very, you know, from Steeplechase to Blue Note to a Prestige New Jazz. Yeah. He has a big discography of music that he have left. Absolutely. 
J-Mac attack, we celebrate the greatness for sure. But my relationship was with everybody backstage, breaking bread, who was drinking, who was smoking, you know, who was doing this, who was on time for the gig, who was late for the gig, who was always late for the gig, or whatever the case may be, who they couldn't find, you know, and all that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Who was representing and who was needed to be represented, and that kind of thing, you know what I mean? So I had to become a man and really get into the music.